Hey everyone, I'm Hannah and this is Spark Academy Home Edition. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit today about life's problems and how we handle them. Now, we face a lot of problems every single day. Some of them are big, some of them are small, but they all have one thing in common and that's that they can be solved. And we use our brains to solve them. Now, our brains need a lot in order to be able to solve problems, to be nice and strong and ready to go. They need lots of oxygen, which we get from breathing in nice and deep. They need water and nutrients, which we get from the things that we drink and the food that we eat. They need lots of practice and exercise, which we get from doing schoolwork and puzzles and anything that makes you think. And they also need lots of rest, sleep at night, but also throughout the day, times where we are calm and maybe even times when we're meditating. Now, one tool that people like to use in order to help their brains stay calm and all of that is what's called a labyrinth. And what I'm going to do today is show you how to draw and make one of these of your own and then how to use it. So all you're gonna need is something to write on, something to write with. So a labyrinth might look complicated, but just like our problems, they can be pretty easy once you know how they work. You'll start with a cross shape in the middle of the paper. The up and down line should be about the same size as the line going across. Then you'll draw little L shapes in each of the four corners. Last, you just need to add one dot in each corner. This base shape for our labyrinth creates an imaginary square. Now, starting with the point at the top of the middle line and going to the point of the top of the line next to it, you're gonna connect them with a curve. Then to the left and to the right, you'll connect each of those points with another curve. Then you'll go to the left again and to the right and connect those with another curve. And you'll do the same all the way around the entire labyrinth. It's okay if your curves aren't super even, mine usually aren't, um, and this is good practice of your fine motor skills, which is all about the connection between your brain and your hand when you're doing something small and detailed. Your last curve will go all the way around your labyrinth to connect the final two points. If you like, you can decorate your labyrinth. Sometimes uh, I'll write words in mine. So this one is full of things that make me happy and make me feel safe. This one I put lots of color in. This one I did with crayons and instead of making curves, I made more square shapes. You can do it however you like. It can be big, it can be small. To use your finger labyrinth, you'll need to relax. Put your finger on the page and take a few deep breaths. And then begin to slowly trace the path to the middle. Focus on that path and on your breathing. Whatever you've been thinking about, leave it on the outside of the labyrinth. Just breathe. While we're going to the middle of the labyrinth, we're also going to the middle of you and what you're feeling. When you get to the middle, leave your finger there. Hang out for a little bit. Some people like to meditate. Some people like to just sit in the quiet and not think about anything. Some people like to pray or sing either out loud or in their head. Um, I like to put my hand on my chest and focus on what my body's doing. My heart beating, my lungs breathing. The feel of the paper underneath my finger. And then when you're ready, trace your way back out of the center 
to the outside of the labyrinth. And as you slowly go back to the outside, start thinking about those thoughts that you left on the outside. Keep breathing. And hopefully, when you make it to the end, your brain will feel nice and refreshed and ready to go. I hope you guys like this activity. It's something that's a lot of fun to do by yourself or with other people. And remember to stay safe, wash your hands, and we hope to see you next time.